The Story of Chuju, one of the strangest, but possibly the most entertaining film in the collaboration's Blu-ray box set. Released in 1992, and the first movie in this collection to be set in the time it was filmed, this movie really took me by surprise. And it was a good surprise. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance, and welcome to Asian Film Fans. The storyline of this one is quite humorous. A heavily pregnant woman and her husband live in a village growing chilies. Her husband and the village chief get into a disagreement, which results in the village chief assaulting him, kicking him in the balls. The movie takes place after this event. Chuju is on a quest for justice. She wants the chief to apologize to her husband, but at every level of bureaucracy she takes her case to, including all the way to the top court in Beijing, the chief is only compelled to pay a small reparation fee. The movie follows her frustration, while at the same time critiquing and exploring modern Chinese culture, including saving face, cutting through the red tape of government, and importantly, the role of women in society. And for a hundred minutes, this is very funny and very entertaining. Unlike our normal reviews, I want to look at the actual Blu-ray disc, the transfer of the film, and the presentation you get when you buy this box set. Honestly, the cover which is based on the French release is nothing special, and of all the titles in this collection, it's probably the one with the least interesting and intriguing artwork. If you didn't know the plot of the film, you'd probably think it was just another boring Chinese folk movie. But how wrong that would be? And I believe part of that is due to the title of the film, as the original Chinese translation is something like Chu Zhu's lawsuit or Chu Zhu's quest for justice. There's even an alternative title called Chu Zhu Goes to Court, which is far more suitable, especially if you don't know the story. The same art is used for the disc label, as is typical with this collection, with another less than interesting image used for the inside cover art. And again, like all the titles in this collection, the back cover is very plain, but at least it has a synopsis and that horrible world quixotic that I couldn't pronounce the first time I saw it, which means extremely idealistic, unrealistic, and impractical. The disc is about 28 gigabytes, the smallest of all the movies so far, with the main feature taking up 25 gigabytes. The movie is in 171 to 8, which is exactly the 169 format, meaning a nice and full screen picture for your widescreen monitors, with a two channel stereo presentation in Mandarin. Thankfully, no issues with this disc, it's just the same average UI like all the other discs. And like all the other discs, you get a Tony Raines documentary and a trailer, which is not the greatest. So how's the video transfer? I've got to be honest. If this was a 2K rescan of the negative transfer, then the original negative used must have been pretty average. The picture is soft and lacking any sharpness, and thankfully that also means there's no post-processing work, but it's a clear downgrading quality from Raise the Red Lantern. Colors don't look vibrant, but I did like this night scene, with the strong blue tint as they walk through the snow in the dark. The urban scenes do look grimy and gritty though, exactly how you'd imagine Beijing to look like in the early 90s as the onset of rapid urbanization occurred. Keep an eye out for all the propaganda posters mixed in with all the Western art, images and advertisements. The audio though is a strange one. There are times where the dialogue is drowned out by either the foreground or background conversations and noises. But I'm pretty sure this is deliberate, and a metaphor for Chujuo's voice always being drowned out by men. It's a clever technique, Yumul, and one that really had me fooled at the start, thinking it was odd that such a talented director would have such poor sound mixing. The movie scores a 4 out of 5. Believe it or not, this was a surprise. Entertaining and humorous. I really enjoyed this, although now I'm officially sick of Gong Li playing housewives in Yumul movies. The presentation scores 2 out of 5, bad cover choice, plain back cover, typical bad UI for this series, but at least it has a trailer. The transfer scores a 2.5 out of 5. I don't think the transfer for this film is quite as good as it should be. It looks soft and really shows its age. Poor film stock or poor transfer. Who knows? I hope you enjoyed this Blu-ray review of the story of Chu Zhu. Next up is To Live and it looks like Gong Li plays yet another housewife. Thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you next time.